Hello and welcome to tutorial number five. Uh, this video is going to look at string crossing. Um, this is, uh, can be quite a confusing thing, especially if you've come to the viol uh, from, from playing violin family instruments. Um, the main difference between uh, those instruments and, and viols uh, in terms of uh, changing string is that in violin family instruments, um, we can quite simply uh, lift the bow off the string and, and replace it uh, where we want it. On the viol, uh, the bow almost never leaves the string. So we have to find slightly more inventive ways of getting from one string to, to the next. Um, the good news is that, in part at least, this is actually quite an easy uh, process, which is good because we've got quite a lot of strings to, to contend with. Um, so one of the things I see, um, especially again from, from, from ex uh, violin family member players uh, is uh, that there is an attempt to lift the bow or to lift the arm. So they'll put the bow on the string uh, and they'll be playing one note and then they'll sort of do some kind of fancy movement with the arm uh, which, which lifts the arm. Uh, and while that does get you to the next string, it often means, as, as is currently the case, that my bow is pointing downwards. So if I play on the next string, I don't get a, a proper contact. Um, so the, the difference then is, is that we don't lift. Um, there's no uh, shoulder movement or upper arm movement to change string. We simply push the hand forwards, or if you like, push it towards the audience. So if I start on the C string, and I want to get, or, or even better, if I, if I start uh, on the G string um, and I want to get all the way to the top of the instrument, all I need to do is push my hand forward. And there we go, I'm on the top string. Um, this requires um, that you've watched the first couple of videos and that your, uh, your bow hold is very relaxed and that you're not gripping with your fingers uh, and, and that the wrist is loose because this only works um, if the bow can fall naturally across the strings as the bow, as the fist, the hand, is pushed forwards. Um, and this is because at all times we want to maintain um, a parallel relationship between bow and bridge. If the bow starts to point downwards or upwards, um, then the, the contact with the, between the hair and the string is, is broken and it becomes much easier to make um, the strings sound, sound scratchy, so for example like this. Or on the top string, it can even create squeaks. So if you're hearing that uh, in your own playing, it may be that you need to adjust the angle of your bow relative to the bridge. So to repeat that, we need to have the, the stick of the bow parallel with the bridge. And that changes, that angle changes um, depending on the string. So on the bass string, the bow is going to be angled very differently to, to the angle of the, the bow on the top string. Um, so the idea that one, when one pushes the bow forwards, the bow falls naturally across the strings is very important because if the bow is free to do that, it will naturally end up parallel to the bridge. When we're changing strings between adjacent strings, um, this pushing forward is, is, is very minimal because the distance between strings uh, is, is also very small. Um, if we uh, start on, say, the C string again uh, and we push the bow forward, we only have to go a few centimeters with the arm before the bow has fallen across onto the E string. The same if we want to go down. If I start on the C string and I want to move to the G string, I pull my hand back towards me and the bow falls across naturally onto the G string. If, however, we want to uh, skip multiple strings, then things become a little bit more difficult. Um, because we can't lift the bow off the string, or at least we shouldn't, um, what we have to do is use the intervening strings, which is to say the strings between our origin string and our target string, as a sort of bridge or a pivot point for the bow. So if I start playing on the G string and I want to get up to the E string, I have to jump across the C string in the middle. Um, and we have to treat that C string as a, a sort of uh, waypoint, um, a service station on the motorway of bowing, um, so that it absorbs uh, the, the bow change 
and allows the bow to continue smoothly onto the E string. So I'll just play that and show you what I mean. So I start on the G string, I transfer the bow onto the C string, and then I continue playing on the E string. So one thing to notice here is that I'm not attempting to continue playing once I've left the G string at the point of the bow at which I left the G string. So I, I, I finish playing my G, I transfer to the C where the bow is still, and then I continue to push my hand forward on until my bow reaches the E string, and that point of the hair is, what, an inch further up the hair from the point at which I left the G string. So unlike on the cello where you might um, take the bow off and then replace it where you left on the hair, um, we have to use this rocking mechanism to get across the middle string. And the same is true if, you're, if you jump across a much larger range of strings. Let's say I want to get from the bottom string to the top string. Then I have to use all of the intermediate strings to rock the bow across and continue where I left off. Um, the next stage of this uh, is uh, acknowledging that in order to do this, we can never stop the bow on the string. I'm going to talk about this a little bit more in a later video, but um, if the bow stops before we transfer the hair onto an intervening string, then we get this. And while the change is clean in a certain way, um, what happens is that, the, um, is that the resonance is killed before you leave the string. And we don't want to hear that. So instead what has to be done is you have to slow the bow down just enough uh, that you can tilt the bow onto the intermediate string and you, can, you could hear that the G string continued to ring even after I'd moved the bow. So let's try that again. The same, the same applies for a pull bow as for a push bow. If I'm going from the E string to the G string, I have to slow the bow down um, and then uh, transfer the, the, the hair to the next string. So I'm going to start with a pull bow, slow the bow into the C string change, and then continue to pull my hand towards me so that the G string uh, is, gets a clean start and the E string continues to ring. In a way it's very simple, but it's actually also quite complicated. In all of this, the bow should remain very fluid. The whole motion should remain very, very fluid. Um, even if you're playing something uh, much faster that, re that requires string changing over a range of strings, um, the same thing applies. Uh, we have to be aware of not stopping the bow on the string that we've just left. <laughs> So again, I'm using the bow to bounce off one string, transition across the intervening string, and, uh, and continue uh, on the string two strings further up. So I'm never going... I'm always allowing the bow to continue moving in a fluid motion. I hope you found this useful. We are going to look at um, a more legato bowing uh, in, the, in, in one of the next videos, uh, and that's going to involve similar techniques um, with regard to slowing the bow into your bow changes. Um, but for now, uh, practice transitioning between strings. Maybe start off uh, playing uh, just uh, uh, one string above and one string below. <laughs> making sure that we're not stopping the, the bow on the string, uh, and then try playing uh, 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 one string and then two strings above that. 
using the intermediate string as a transition point and try and get it so that the transition is clean. We don't want to hear the middle string. We don't want to hear that, we just want to hear a clean transition. And then you can, uh, you can evolve from that point and uh, try skipping a whole range more strings until you're getting from the bottom to the top. And bear in mind that it's that forward and backward motion as well. We're not unhooking anything or, or leaping with the arm. If you found this uh, helpful or useful, please consider um, liking and subscribing. Uh, there's also uh, a donate button in the description below. Um, so if you wish to make a donation, I'd be very, very grateful. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this. I'll see you in the next lesson.